Hi. Hi. Are we live? It looks like it. All right. We're a few minutes late, but we're one and a half minutes late. <clears throat> Only half a minute, my fault. Only half a minute, the computer's fault. Yeah. 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 Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Yes. <laughs> With Dr. Ken Berry, family physician, and the lovely and intelligent nurse Nisha Solace hyphen Berry. Don't forget the hyphen. Very important. Yes. So we are live right now on YouTube and on Facebook. Here we are. Yeah, we're here. Tonight we're going to be discussing keto versus carnivore and which one is the right diet for you and some reasons why one versus the other might be the right diet for you. And um, let me say right up front that we we don't, we are not anti-keto or anti-carnivore. We, we think both of them are wonderful options. Or somewhere in between. Or, to, like yeah, or ketovore, yeah. which is right in the middle. So it's a, a ketovore would be a super meat heavy keto, with just a little bit of edge and very, very super low carbohydrate. And so we're going to just kind of bat this subject around and, and give you our personal take on each one. And uh, then we're going to take a bunch of questions from you. First, though, before we get started, I want to know where you're at in the world. What city, what state, what country, what continent? We got Georgia and Australia. All right. Denver. All right. Bunch of places. There's Netherlands. You guys, please, in order to help us, help as many people as possible in the world who suffer from metabolic disease, type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, obesity, share this video. You're welcome to share it anywhere in your groups, uh, on your personal profile. You can start a watch party on Facebook. I think there's a button for that. You can share this to anywhere you want to from YouTube. Just click the share button. If you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, click that subscribe button right now before you forget. Because I always forget to do that. And I'm like, what was that channel? I, I forgot to subscribe. You do? Yeah. And down in the show notes, I've got links to all of my social media and all of Nisha's social media. Yep. She's got a pretty cool YouTube channel herself. It's, it's okay. It's pretty good. We do pretty cool stuff yeah. over there. In the South, we say things are pretty good. No. Some people do. I don't. Some, no, some people that, do. that is correct. <laughs> Usually it's, it's grandfathers or great grandfathers. You say, how you doing, grandpa? He says, ah, pretty good. I've never heard anybody say that. Your grandfather said that. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Okay. So keto versus carnivore. This gets talked about a lot. I think a lot of people get confused because we talk a lot about carnivore. And so people think, well, keto is done, but that's not yeah. true at all. Um, right. Keto is still great. Yeah. And when we say keto, we mean, so we call it berry method keto because the more mainstream keto becomes, the more things get a little bit dicey and the rules get thrown to the wind. So we have berry method keto, which means it's clean keto. Which is a... Proper human diet. That's, that's right. That's right. Because <laughs> as keto becomes more mainstream... Bigger companies are going to jump into the keto space and they're going to try to make a keto bar or a keto cookie or a keto breakfast cereal, which is the dumbest thing in the world, right? It's impossible for a, a breakfast cereal to be keto. It's just impossible. Well, you can't do it. It's, it's not what physically he, okay, possible. What he means is ingredients matter. So if it says keto on it, but then on the back it says wheat, gluten, Soybean rice, oil. Yeah. All that kind of thing. Uh, our way of doing keto is for health optimization. And for that, you need to yeah. take into account ingredients yeah. and seed oils, those type of things, because they, they do matter in the long run. Yeah, we definitely want you to, to reach your ideal body weight. Definitely. And keto or carnivore, either one will help you do that. But what we want most for you is for you to be healthy, for you to feel great every day, look great every day your brain work great every day. That's our ultimate goal for you, not <clears throat> just to lose 20 pounds. I mean, that's a great starter, but that's not really why we're doing this. So keto and carnivore, they're not mutually exclusive. Actually, a carnivore diet is a subset of a ketogenic diet. And right in between the two is what Nisha loves to do most days is ketovore. I do it every day. Yeah. yeah. Some days you eat all meat. Some days you eat a little bit. Well, I still call that ketovore. Because I don't, okay, so there's a lot of dogma in the carnivore sphere. A lot of like, me, me, me. You put, you yes, know, sauce 
on it. Yeah. If, you know, and then yeah. so you're no longer a carnivore. You made so, this in a kitchen. That makes it processed. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really subscribe to the carnivore tag because it stresses me out. I don't like being attacked in the comments yeah. being like, oh my God, you put garlic in there. So you're not a carnivore. Right. You know what I mean? So I just call <clears throat> it ketivore, but it's 95% meat based. But ketivore can be, I think, anywhere from 75% all the way up to 99.999% meat based, meaning everything on your plate except for one tiny spot is either a meat or a animal byproduct, so mm -hmm. eggs, cheese, that kind of thing. Yeah, and there's there's no benefit to being dogmatic about either one of these. There, what we're trying to find is the proper human diet for you personally. And I think that somewhere along that spectrum from a vegetable heavy ketogenic diet all the way up to just uh, fatty red meat and water carnivore, somewhere in there is the perfect way of eating for you so that you enjoy your food. Because I definitely want you to enjoy your food, but also that you get to enjoy good health. And let's get rid of some of the carnivore dogma right now. Have you ever walked out in the yard with your socks off? I mean, with your shoes off and your socks on. You haven't because you would never do I hate that. that. <laughs> I have done that yeah. in the past. When I come in the house, what do I have on my socks? Dirt. And grass. And grass. Every time, right? So if if a lion kills a gazelle out on the savannah and he, he rips its guts open and he drags it back up to his tree to eat it, you're telling me there's not a single grass seed or blade of grass on that gazelle's oh, meat stuck to that. Have you ever tried to, have you ever, when you're cleaning the deer? If you get grass on it, you just might as well forget it. You're not going to get every speck of it off. You're going to have to rinse it off when you get home. So my point is, even 100% strict carnivore still eats some plant matter. It's not the end of the world, and it's not against the rules. So let's all get along and realize that we're all part of this one gigantic family of humans trying to rediscover the proper human diet and not scold each other and yell at each other and block each other. There's a lot of that going around. Yeah. But, uh my, our point is, so there's a spectrum which you can go to. A lot of people say they do great with a lot of plants. And if you are seeing benefits and your labs are good and, and you feel amazing, we are not here to yep. tell you that you're doing it wrong. You are an N equals one experiment. So am I. So is he. We don't eat exactly the same because we see benefits differently. His body's different than mine. I have an autoimmune disorder. He was pre-diabetic. We're different. All of you are different as well. So, but we do encourage you to pay attention to things. Exactly. And pay attention to how your body's reacting. Yes. So we, go ahead. So we, we say proper human diet, but really what we mean by that is proper Nisha diet, proper Dr. Berry diet, proper yeah. you diet. And just because it's keto doesn't mean it, it will be okay for you individually. Right. And all of that wrapped up with a big bowl on top that includes watch the ingredients. The ingredients absolutely matter and um, do what's right for you. All these things are, and so then also any part of the proper human diet is by definition going to be a low carbohydrate diet because super, humans, super low. humans are by design low carbohydrate animals. Now your, your friend that lives across the street that you despise, she might be able to eat lots of fruit and lots of veg and all she did was eliminate sugars and seed oils and grains and boom, her weight went back to normal. She reversed her prediabetes. Everything's great. Yeah. That may work for her for now, but that may not work for you at all. Okay. But that's still, that's keto for her. I mean, she has really cut the carbohydrates and the inflammatory process crap out. That's a great first step. So you guys are not enemies just because you have to eat a much lower carb version than she does. You guys are still in the same team. You're still in the same track. And also, the further you go in your keto proper human diet journey, things may change because we're all aging. And even though keto is great for anti-aging, it doesn't change the fact that the clock is ticking. And especially for women, we go through so many hormonal changes. We go through if you're a teenager, you're starting your cycle, you have a baby, all you put your postpartum, your menopausal, your postmenopausal. There's so many things that can happen that that will change how the way you eat will also change. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Exactly. Uh, and I think that we have to remember we're all individuals. We're all unique snowflakes. But at the same time, we're all still human. 
And so that's why it, within the big picture of this, it's a low carbohydrate diet that does not contain sugar, grains, or vegetable seed oils. Those are the big constraints of Berry Method Keto or the proper human diet. <laughs> <laughs> also, so when it comes to just the same with keto and carnivore, I love eating carnivore or ketovore, but I have an autoimmune disorder. I have Hashimoto's, which yep. means I am sensitive to dairy and I actually had a food sensitivity test and it was like a hundred percent. You're sensitive to cow, to cow dairy. So I can eat goat's milk, which is not dairy, but a lot of people still put it in the same category. I can have goat's milk, goat cheese and stuff like that, but I really need to cut out cow cheese and, and heavy cream, which makes me want to cry. But the point is those are considered carnivore foods, but they are not, Nisha, right. ketovore right. foods, even though that's right. technically a keto food and then and, that's and healthy and all of that, there's yeah. nothing bad about it. Yeah. And there are some things that come from animals that are not carnivore or keto, either one. So low fat milk, skim milk, honey, those things are the uh, honey is bee vomit. And I, I, uh, I would advise you to not eat any form of vomit, including bee vomit. I watched the video. So the, the bee goes and gets the nectar, right? Mm -hmm. And is digesting it. Then when she gets back, she throws it up into another bee's mouth. And then that bee takes it and then throws it up into another bee's mouth. And so it's like not just the vomit of one bee, it's the vomit of multiple bees. That's what honey is. So even though low fat milk comes from an animal, all the fat's gone. And that's the, really the only good thing about it. Adult mammals don't drink milk. And I, even if it's raw milk and processed and pasteurized, adult mammals do not drink milk. It is not done in the wild. And we need to live like we're still eating in the wild. Let's talk about honey for a minute because yeah. that's, a, that's considered carnivore by some carnivores, depending on um, the click that you're in, I guess, at the, the, this time. I think that honey is delicious, even mm. if it is vomit. 100%. I love honey. I can eat a cup a day. Eat the comb, my grandpa had honeybees. Like I love so did honey. Mine. All right. Yeah. Now, did I do I think ancestrally we ate honey? Yeah, probably. 100% once but a year. For the life that we are all living right now and for all the issues that a lot of us have, honey is a, number one a trigger probably for a lot of us and a gateway drug probably. Raise and your hand. Is that, is that you? Raise if your you hand. have a metabolic issue, it could affect you in a negative way. And I don't know many people who have had a history of, of carb addiction yeah. that can say, you know what, honey, that's special. It's magic. And I won't overeat that. Yeah. So just honey, honey is definitely an ancestral food to human beings, but it was a very rare food and it was very hard to it's get. It's a dangerous food to get. And, yeah. And you paid a price to get it. <laughs> and so you didn't eat that very often. Definitely. You didn't put a tablespoon in your coffee every morning, a hundred thousand years ago. And uh, a lot of people are trying to pit different people in the keto carnivore community against each other. I am I'm, me and Paul Saladino are great buddies. I love the guy. I wish you would come to Nashville and spend the weekend with us. I wish you would move to Nashville. I wish you would move. <laughs> yeah, Paul, move to Nashville. He dude. moved to Austin, which yeah. is like yeah. Nashville well, and Texas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But so maybe next year he can graduate to Nashville. But yeah, I love the guy. And I agree with so much that he says. And I'm not sure that Paul is advocating eating eating honey every day. I don't think that's what he's saying yeah. if you listen carefully. But I think he underestimates the amount of people that there are in the world, especially in keto that have come to keto for health optimization that can't do what he does. Yeah, true, true. And he's a very, very healthy guy. And now he had his health problems of his own, make no mistake, but he may be able to eat some honey on an occasional basis, basis and then not call on his carbohydrate monkey like it does on mine. We don't have honey in the house. If we had honey anywhere in this house, I would ferret it out and I would, Binge on it. I can. Gone. I should do a YouTube and I'll be video. Like, but it was keto. I should do a YouTube video where I just put a jar of honey on yeah. the counter and see how long it takes you to mm -hmm. succumb. Yeah, I'll be eating the honey and then filling it up with water like a teenager with in the liquor bottle. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of other people's questions about ketovore, keto, carnivore, are about meat quality and the types of meat, and does it have to be 
grass fed, grass finished, panda massaged beef and, and no antibiotics and, and like all of that stuff. So what say you, Dr. Barry? Eating meat that's grass fed and grass finished, that's never been exposed to any antibiotics whatsoever, even if it was sick, that is that meat is a slightly better quality meat, maybe one to five percent better. Dr. Peter Ballerstad, another great friend of ours, he's got some information about this. He gives it during his presentation. It's not worth double the cost, double the price. And most of the time, grass fed, grass finished ribeye is about twenty two dollars a pound. Who's got money for that? So if you can afford that, if $22 a pound, you're like, whatever, then yeah, definitely it's a little bit better, but it's not enough better for you to have to pawn a kid or something to buy that the grass finished beef. Well, it's not that big of a difference for you to say, well, I just can't do it because I can't afford to eat the grass right. fed when all you can afford is Walmart, yeah. Kroger, right. whatever, you know, just ground beef in the tube because you can still see, there's plenty of people in the comments right now, I guarantee you, if you've seen benefits without eating grass-fed beef, like huge benefits, getting off meds, lowering A1C, all that stuff, put it in the comments because that, you still get that. Now, what about antibiotics and all that stuff? Is that in the meat? Yeah. Do we need so, to worry about that? Back in the, in the day, back in the 70s and 80s, there was actually quite a bit of hormones uh, in, the, in the beef industry. They used it. And now the guidelines are so tight, they, they just almost can't get away with that at all. And then antibiotics are the same way because actually giving antibiotics routinely to animals makes them bigger, makes them fatter, makes them way more. And so for a few years, the, the chicken industry man was giving every chicken a shot of, of antibiotics regularly because the chicken would wind up weighing one or two pounds more when it went to market. So that's more money. But that's that is no longer uh, legal. That's it's sanctioned and frowned upon. Nobody does that anymore. So it's just not that bad. So the the take home message is: Yeah, buy the best quality meat you can afford. By all means, if you can support a local farmer, buy eggs locally. Definitely, all of us could do that. Unless you live in the heart of Manhattan, I guarantee you, you've got a neighbor within five miles who has some hens in the backyard. Try to find a local farm that raises chickens for meat and, and pork for meat and beef for meat. Uh, we, I just found out today there's a huge um, grass-fed uh, ranch up in Clarksville, Tennessee that I'm going to be ordering stuff from. Uh, yeah, it's just up the road. And so when you when you buy local meat like that, you understand what an impact that has on, on the, the environment. Because you're not having to ship meat from New Zealand. Well, or, not even just that, but the economy. And you're helping as your well, local economy. Yeah, because absolutely. that's important. It's yeah. more important now than it probably yeah. ever has been yeah. to vote with your dollars. Vote with your dollars. Preach. We just found Preach. duck egg, local duck eggs the other day. And they're gone now. I drove right by there today. I should have went and got some more. Mm. Sorry. But they were so good. Do the best you can. Yep. Don't feel bad if you can't afford the grass fed. It's Don't okay. Feel bad. You can you can improve your health eating the cheapest hot dogs, bologna, and ground beef at your supermarket. That that is a thousand times better than eating the Lego waffles and the um, high ho crackers. Thousand times better. Eat the the best meat you can afford, but don't not do keto or carnivore because you think you can't afford the good stuff. Uh, Blackberry Homestead, thanks for the super chat. She wants to know strict carnivore for three months and only lost three pounds. Okay. Okay, I'd love to know how how old she is, but she can't ask another question that I can ever find. So, the average thing that happens to women forty and older is that you gain about a pound a year. Some women gain more than that a year, but starting about the age of 40, that's normal. And so the fact that you have held your weight stable for however long, that's a victory. First of all, that's not a defeat. And so you're in a weight maintenance pattern and that may last for a few weeks or a few months. But you have to understand you're way healthier now eating this uh, personal, proper human diet that you're eating. And you'd also be three pounds heavier if you were still eating the crap. So it's a, it's a victory. Even though I know you're wanting the scale to move, that's not the only gauge of health. Also, though, other than that, if you don't already follow Kelly Hogan, her channel on YouTube is My Zero Carb Life. And she is 100% carnivore. Cheap carnivore. She eats McDonald's 
burger patties. And says it just like that. McDonald's. McDonald's. And we, we love Kelly. Yes. But when she first started uh, carnivore, she gained weight in the beginning. But she kept going and stayed consistent. And eventually it turned and she started to lose weight. And she was very heavy. You can go look at her before and after pictures over on Instagram. She's lost a ton of weight. She looks yep. like a completely different person. Yep. She's healed her body. She is so upbeat and up going and she just exudes happiness. You can tell she's really just turned her health around, <clears throat> but do not get discouraged by the scale because sometimes it will go up for women. Our bodies are like, what is going on? And, and sometimes it'll just do stuff like that. So just keep going and play with your fat and protein macros. Maybe yep. you need less fat. Maybe you need more fat. Play around with that because sometimes that matters for women a little bit more than men. They just lose weight. It's so we annoying. Do. Yeah. And just remember you're eating the proper human diet. Your body is going to move in the right direction when it's ready, when it's healed to a certain extent when you've corrected some of the metabolic problems you've had in the past, when your body's confident that there's there, that everything's okay, you're going to start to burn fat. That's going to happen. And my other question would be, what's your alternative to go back to eating standard American diet? Cause we know what that's going to do. Yeah. Don't concentrate you're, on the scales. You're not doing anything wrong. It just takes time. It's not a 30 minute sitcom. Um, Carl says, love the PhD summit. Woo -woo. Uh, my question is, how are, what are your recommendations to improve sleep, sleep quality on keto and carnivore? Yeah. So uh, things that I do to help my sleep quality is I try to eat a, a diet rich in magnesium sources, which most meat has a good source of magnesium. I also use some of keto chow's magnesium drops in some topo chico at bedtime, a little, little bit of liquid, not too much. I've got a YouTube video about, I don't know, 10 or 15 tips to really help you maximize your sleep. Keeping in mind that as we get older, you don't sleep as dead to the world as you did when you were 18 years old. Uh, but you still want to get the best quality sleep that you can get at your age. Sleep is one of the underrated issues that is actually included in the proper human diet because we this it's all about health optimization. We talk about sleep stress reduction, all kinds of stuff. It's not just what you put in your mouth. It's what you put in your brain too. 100%, yeah, 100%. Um, Aida wants to know what's your opinion on a cheat day a month with NAFLD, not a payout type of cheat, but like a sandwich, maybe just one item once a month. Thanks for all you do and the info that you give us. Thanks for the super chat, Ada. Yeah. What do you um, think about that? I think that this is one of those super personal things. And I don't encourage it because if I encourage it to one person, then everybody wants to do it and not everybody can do it. Yep. If you are the type of person who can moderate yourself, that's up to you knowing that that bread on the sandwich isn't doing anything good for you. It just tastes good in the moment, but you're going to do it anyways. Yeah, that's that's on you. And if you can <clears throat> do it and you and you don't see any side effects and you feel OK, I can't tell you not to do that, but I don't encourage it. And a hundred percent of the time, you're going to feel like crap after you do it. And it's like, why did I even do yeah. that? Now I'm yeah. I'm going to have to like go through the process yeah. of having that in my body. And it wasn't even worth it. Yep. And a lot of people start out doing that, having a cheat day once a week or a cheat meal, but almost without exception, they quit that after a few weeks or a few months because it, it becomes not worth it because you feel like crap for two days for, for a sandwich. And so I would, I would, I would recommend you don't do that. And here's why two reasons. First of all, you understand you say a, a cheat meal. So who are you cheating? Yourself. You're cheating. You're cheating yourself of a little bit of health and who knows what kind of reaction you're going to have to the sugar and the vegetable oils and the grains in, in that sandwich. You don't know. Uh, and then secondly, what if your spouse came to you and said, honey, can I cheat on you once a week? Would that be okay? I don't really want to put that in that card. I mean, that's this only affects. I want to put you. it just like that, that affects two people. This is affecting one person. It's you. It's your well, body. Well, if you're hurting your health, are you hurting people you love? Okay, you're being a little dramatic about it. But, um, if it's your body and and you are okay with putting a little poison yeah. in it, like every now and then we have a little. But like I was vodka. gonna say, sometimes I have an alcoholic drink, and that's not keto. Okay, it can be keto True. friendly. True. But really, alcohol is not healthy. It's not helping anything. True. But I, I am making a conscious decision to be like, it's okay yep. for me to do this. 
even, yep. but I'm also conscious that it's not promoting health <clears throat> in any way. So. Yeah. Last night we had, we had a drink and I actually, I actually faked my drink. I just had sparkling water with some electrolyte drops. I didn't put any alcohol in mine. But it's a job. No, because it's literally become to the point where it's just not worth it. No, I know, but you didn't tell me. Because that's one of the many things that, that affects my sleep. If I have alcohol really? uh, any later than 2 p.m., it's it's worse than caffeine for me now. And, I, and that's kind of a, a pain in the butt, kind of annoying. But I cannot sleep worth the crap the entire night. So it's just, I, I faked it. I, faked, I, I did, I pulled a, a teenager maneuver and faked having a drink. No teenager would ever fake a drink. <laughs> but I see what you're saying. Okay, so a lot of people want to know about the different types of meat. Are they all okay on carnivore, <clears throat> ketivore, or do we stick? Because a lot of carnivores are strictly beef, yep. <clears throat> and uh, we're not. Yeah, I think for some people it definitely does matter. Your, your why is going to help you understand this. So if you have an autoimmune condition, then you may need to stick with only beef, uh, beef, sheep, and goat. You, you, the ruminants and venison, anything with multiple stomachs, because they tend to be way less inflammatory for some of us than chicken and pork. Uh, but if you're just doing this just for weight loss and to reverse your type two diabetes, etc., and reverse your fatty liver, then chicken and pork are, are fine. There's no problem with that. We eat chicken, pork, lamb, venison, uh, seafood, yep. shellfish. Turkey. We eat everything that yep. has legs yep. or fins. Yeah, basically. legs or fins, pretty or, much. Or yeah. eggs. Well, like we eat a lot of eggs yep. also. Yeah. So I think that there are some people that, like you said, they have to eat beef because they have yep. sensitivities yep. to that. We have things. friends with severe autoimmune conditions. They have to eat fatty beef salt and water mm -hmm. and if they don't consider that to be a sacrifice they don't consider that to be restrictive because when they eat that way they feel amazing they can live their life as opposed yeah, to they feel normal and happy constantly. yeah uh, as opposed to being in pain and depressed yes meat water and salt i'll take that please yeah uh all right so Raymond wants to know about diet soda. It hasn't seemed to affect me negatively through my first three months of carnivore. That's another thing that some people can get away with it yeah. and, and think that they're not seeing any effects. And maybe maybe you're not. Maybe your A1C <clears throat> and your, your, all that stuff, your insulin is fine. But some people may be sensitive to diet coke. Yeah. And so let's. I think we can all agree that diet soda is not good for not you. Optimal. It's not optimal. Yeah. It's not helping you in any way. You enjoy the taste. I get it in the bubbles and the fizz. But you you agree, it's it, there's, it's not healthy. There's nothing in it. There's no nutrition that you need. It's you not just, real. It's not real, right. <laughs> and so that kind of would initially make my antenna go up and go, oh, wait a minute, what? So, but if you're if you're progressing and your your health is getting better, then yeah, keep drinking your Diet Coke. But if you stall or if you start to have weird inflammation or some problem, it, you probably need to get rid of the diet. We soda. do encourage most people to get off the diet drinks because yeah. it isn't op health yeah. optimum. It's not in, it's, it's crap. You yeah. know, it's yeah. literally made in a, in a in chemical, a chemical factor. factory. 100%. There's nothing in that that's real. Yep. It's all chemicals. Yep. Uh, how we got off the Diet Cokes or Diet Dr. Pepper or Diet Mountain Dew for him is Topo Chico, which is sparkling water. Yep. But this is our favorite sparkling water. It's super, super fizzy. So it kind of gives you the feeling of beer or Diet Coke. It comes in a glass bottle. Get the glass, don't get the plastic. And it really does help get yep. kick the hat in. Sam Pellegrino's the same, Gerald Steiner, Perrier, any sparkling water like that, any mineral, mineral water is going to give you the fizz and the bite. And you can get some uh, um, real salt, relight, some Redmond's Relight that, that has berry flavor and stuff. If you just got to have some flavor in your sparkling water, mix that in. And then you've got a soft drink that's actually just mineral water and electrolytes. Or you can put some Keto Chow Daily Mineral Drops in or there. Or you can put some Keto Chow Daily Mineral. Uh, if you haven't seen this, these are new from Keto Chow. And they've got this cute picture of Dr. Berry on them because uh, he did some consulting on this to make sure that it was a good quality product. So basically what it is, is it's all the electrolytes, but it's got minerals in it too. So 
chloride, magnesium, boron, iodine, which he talks about all the time, chromium, zinc, magnesium, selenium. Anyways, it's really good stuff. Check it out. I don't know how to hold this. <laughs> it's backwards. I don't know what to do with it's my hands. It's a huge bottle. Uh, the cap is a serving size. It tells you how to use it on the bottle. Super easy to use. And they're not as, like, bold flavored as the straight up electrolytes. These are kind of more mellow. I like this better than the electrolytes, but uh, it's, it's, it's just another way to get your electrolytes, but extra stuff too. Before I would have to sneak and put some electrolyte drops in her coffee or whatever. Now she's like, Hey, put some mineral drops in there. You actually like it. Yeah. I like it in my coffee. I put it in my coffee. All right. So what's something we've, been needing to tell people about. Oh, oh, the lab course. Okay. Uh, so some of you did the lab course with Kim and Dr. Barry and you get a big PDF and then you get a, a, a live chat and a Facebook group, is mm -hmm. it? And so they're going to do that on October 6th. It's coming yep. up October 6th. <clears throat> the website is commonsenselabscourse.com. If you want to go sign up for that, I don't what think I'll, I put a link in the. You I didn't. It's I don't okay. think I did. Um, somebody can put it in the comments, maybe. Common Sense Labs Course. Course. Com. What? So you just talk about the main labs. Yeah. So we talk in. about if you're 40 or 50 years old, what labs should you have checked in order to to know if you're metabolically healthy or not? Because a lot of doctors order very minimal lab work and uh, once a year, and then when when they call you with the results, they say. Hey, all your labs are normal. See you next year. But by all your labs, they mean only the labs I ordered on you, which usually are not nearly enough labs. So we kind of go into some, some depth and detail about what labs you actually need to check once a year uh, in order to know, are you pre-diabetic? Are you hyperinsulinemic? Do you have chronic inflammation? If your doctor doesn't check certain key labs, you'll have no idea if you're hyperinsulinemic and inflamed or not, because your doc didn't check the labs you needed. Okay, so do you think there is anybody who can see no benefits from going carnivore? Do you think there's some a subset of people that eating carnivore could make them gain a ton of weight or no. see a bunch of I, I personally, effects? I have not seen anybody who uh, can eat enough fatty meat to gain a substantial amount of weight. Now I would put a challenge out there. I'll pay you a hundred bucks if you can eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs and actually gain 20 pounds doing that and document that. Of fat? I'll give you a hundred bucks. Yeah. Not muscle. Yeah, not muscle. Yeah. I want, I'm talking about fat. So we'll check a we'll check a DEXA scan and see how much if you can gain 20 pounds of fat on your body by eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I'll give you a hundred bucks because I don't think it's possible. The human physiology is just not designed that way. You can't get fat on that. But if you add too many carbohydrates in, you're going to get fat. And one thing that trips up a lot of people on keto and then even on carnivore is sauces, spices, and rubs. And cheese. And, <laughs> and cheese. But you'll think, well, this sauce, you know, it's just, I'm just going to use a little. That's got 12 grams of carbohydrates in it. And so you're thinking you're eating just meat. And especially if you buy your meat from a restaurant, there's a, a, a rib joint up the road. They have amazing ribs, but they, they don't add the sauce later. They add the sauce before they cook it. So you're going to get from five to 10 grams of carbs for each big brontosaurus rib that you eat by definition, if you eat at that restaurant. And so we choose not to eat it that when we eat it. another one that doesn't put sauce on the meat before they cook it. And so you got to watch the rubs, the sa the sauces, uh, and then even some spices will throw some sugar in there. You got to watch all that stuff. And for a lot of people who are carnivore and they're gaining weight, it's, I think it's because of the sauces and stuff. And um, I had somebody on Twitter reach out and say, you know, you're right about that. I looked at this rub we were using and it had, I was eating like 10 extra grams of carbs a day and had no idea because they were really putting that stuff on their meat because it was a dry powder. So how could that have a lot of carbs? But it did. Okay, so there's a lot of people on YouTube talking about carb cycling. And uh, there's some people want to know what we think about carb cycling. Yeah. So and I think most of the time this is 
pointed towards women. That yes. Women need to carb cycle. That men don't need to. But women women do. with thyroid issues, especially. Yeah, and so I, my answer to that would be: human beings, a hundred thousand years ago, we carb cycled once a year. It was called the fall when all the fruit and berries got ripe. We ate the hell out of that so we could gain five, 10, 15 pounds for the winter. That's why we carb cycle was to gain weight. And so if one of your biggest goals of this whole thing is to lose fat, a meaningful amount of fat, then carb cycling ain't your friend. I'm sorry. So I see a lot of this, like I said, for women and for, and for, Thyroid women, especially, I have thyroid issues. I have Hashimoto's and I'm hypothyroid. So I, myself, of course, I want to carb cycle, especially in the beginning. Of course, if you told me you're a woman and you have hypothyroid, so you're going to need to carb cycle, I'd be like, okay, Yay. sure, I totally will carb cycle. But did I see any benefit other than being able to eat carbs when I did that? No, 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 I no. didn't. I, it did not help me in any way whatsoever. Staying true to meat heavy keto has not only helped me feel better, but my labs are brilliant. Yep. And not just according to him, I actually have a functional medicine nurse practitioner that I go to because I feel like this, he may be a little biased towards what I'm doing. And the nurse practitioner I go to is doing AIP, which is autoimmune protocol diet, but she loves seeing me because it puts a different perspective for her. And she's totally open to it. And she's like, I can't argue with your lab results. Yeah. Your labs look amazing. I went to see her today and she was like, I can't tell you to stop doing what you're doing because what you're doing yeah. is working. The carnivore diet is the ultimate AIP diet. For me. Yeah. Yeah. And for there's a students. ton of women out there that be like, I did it and I felt like crap. And I felt like crap too for a little while because I wanted to eat carbs. Yeah, it's called <laughs> carbohydrate withdrawal. But then, you know, the longer I did it, the more benefits I saw. And now I'm never going back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really sad when people buy into the carb cycling thing. What about egg intolerance? Can anything be done for people who have issues like they get nauseous or yeah. they just don't 90 percent of the time, it's the white. It's the egg, egg white. white. Some people, if it's undercooked, it, it, they have a reaction of some sort. And it could be GI nausea or it might be a, a little worse reaction. Other people just have to avoid the white altogether and only eat the yolk. Virtually no one I've ever talked to has a sensitivity to the yolks. And a lot of people just think it's eggs in general. But 90, 95 to 99% of the time, it's the whites. Is it okay to do keto carnivore with stage two kidney disease? Tina wants to know. You absolutely need to do keto carnivore if you want to keep your remaining kidney function. And anybody out there, if you've got stage one, two, three, four chronic kidney disease, keto carnivore is really not optional for you. It not only is it an option, it's really your only option because if you continue to eat a, a high carbohydrate diet, your kidney function will get worse. That's why now there's a dialysis clinic on every corner. There's a there's a funeral home, a, a pawn shop, a convenience store, and a dialysis center on every corner because people are eating too many carbohydrates. The lower carbohydrate diet you eat, the more you're going to protect your remaining kidney function. It's very important for you to eat keto or carnivore or somewhere in between. All right. What about pork? Is it inflammatory? Ryan wants to know because he has noticed issues with gout and uh, pork and shrimp. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. For some people, the uh, so pork in general has a higher omega-6 count than beef or other ruminants. Pigs are not ruminants. They only have one stomach. They're, they just have a gullet like we do, and they eat anything. For some people, the omega-6 count in pork is uh, too high and they might have uh, inflammatory or autoimmune issues from pork. So you may need to stick with ruminants. And it's not just beef. It's beef, sheep, goat, and venison. Anything that has multiple, a multi-chambered stomach is a ruminant. And those are almost never, ever, ever inflammatory for anybody. 
Uh, the majority of people can eat pork and chicken, even though they do have a higher omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio than beef or sheep or goat. It's still a thousand times better than the standard American diet. Uh, the standard American diet typically has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 40 to 1 or 20 to 1. If you're eating a carnivore diet that includes pig and chicken, then you're going to have an omega-3 to or omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 4 to 1, 3 to 1. That's a very good ratio. But for some people, it's that's still an inflammatory insult and they have to just eat ruminants only. I think we have some trolls tonight. Ooh. Anytime we talk about carnivore, yeah. the yeah. comment section yeah. gets a little weird. Yeah, I would just say anytime you're getting emotionally upset about a, uh, your dietary choice, that's worrisome. You, this is This is something that you should do for your own benefit, not because you're a you know, uh, a proselyte for some particular way of eating. Do what you want. Yeah, do what works for you and let other people do the same. Uh, okay, we get asked this a lot too. What do you do for snacks? Dr. Yeah. Uh, Sidewis talked at the PhD Summit and he talked about snacks a little bit and what he thought about snacks. And we pretty much agree with him on this. Yeah. Snacking is a habit. Snacking is something that you were taught that you needed to do by your mom, your grandmother, and your kindergarten teacher. Snacking is not an adult activity. Snacking is a childish behavior. Snacking is always an emotional event. Now, if I hurt your feelings a little bit just then, I, I did it on purpose because I want you to I want you to rethink this. What makes you think you need a snack between meals? Back in the 1950s, if any of you guys grew up back in the 50s, if you went into the kitchen between meals and started rattling around in the frigid air in the cupboards, what would your mama do to you? She would come after you with the wooden spoon and she would run you out of her kitchen and probably out of the entire house and tell you not to come back before dinner. That's part of the reason that even though they ate cakes and, and pies and cookies back in the 50s, there were very few people who were obese because they didn't eat constantly. They didn't graze all day with three meals a day and snacks in between. It's not ancestrally appropriate to snack. It's not something human beings have ever done in the history of our time on this planet until the big food manufacturers said, hey, you should eat every two hours. It's good for you. Stop snacking. Well, most snack foods... Let's think about this. What are what are you usually if when you were doing standard American? What was this go to snacks? Were they healthy right. things? Never. No. Never. No. Because why? Yeah. Because it's marketing. Yeah, it's marketing and it's emotions and it's habit and it may be a little bit addiction. And when you mix all that together, that that makes things feel hardwired. Like, no, I gotta have a snack. What are you talking but, about? But okay. So let's talk about real people like, okay, nurses that are doing a 12 hour shift and you don't have time to sit down and eat a meal. All right. Guess what you can do? Get you an air fryer first of all, because I finally got one and I see what all the hype is about. They're awesome. And you know what you can do with an air fryer? You can fry up some bacon in nine minutes, put it in a Ziploc bag, take it with you to work. Boom. Yeah. Snack. And see, that's not actually a snack. No, that's actually a meal. Food to eat. So I think right. we should really start saying um, easy access food Convenience as opposed food. to snack. Yeah. Because I think that's what a lot of you really mean. Like, I need something when I'm in the car and right. I have seven kids in right. the back seat fighting with each other yeah. and I don't have time yep. to sit down and eat a meal. Yeah. So there are things. So olives and bacon are Boiled really eggs. good. Boiled eggs. Yep. Uh, you can buy clean beef jerky now. Epic is a really good brand, but some of them have sugar. So make sure you turn them around because just because it's Epic brand doesn't mean there's not sugar Ingredients. in there. Some of them do, yep. and, but a lot of them don't. Pork rinds and uh, pork rinds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those kind of things are good for those of you who are like, I'm freaking busy. I cannot cook something right yeah. now. I just need something I can grab and go out the door. And those are some good pickles. Yeah. Pickles are really good as long yeah. as they're not sugar. You can you can fry a ribeye in bacon grease in the skillet. Let it cool. You can slice it up into strips that are exactly the size of a payday candy bar. And you can put them in a Ziploc bag and take them to work with you. And so if you would pick up a payday candy bar and eat it with your fingers, why couldn't you do that with a with a strip of ribeye too? You can.
Are we back? Are we back? I don't know. I think we are. I magically disappeared. Here <laughs> I am. Okay, we fixed it. All right. So, yeah. So I think that's what a lot of people are really, yeah. when they say snack, they're really needing something that's just easy and for yeah. on the go. But just because you need something that's quick and easy and on the go does not mean you need something that comes in a cardboard okay. box and a plastic wrapper. That you've got, that's the, that's the habit and the addiction. You've got to break that. That anything that comes in a cardboard box in a plastic wrapper, that's probably a no, right? But if you boil a dozen eggs and put a bag in the fridge, cook up two pounds of bacon in your air fryer, put it in a Ziploc bag after it cools off, boom, you are hooked up with a with a nutritionally complete, proper human diet in your pocket. Yeah, we love bacon. A lot of people get concerned because if you turn the package over, it says sugar on bacon because it's cured. With yeah. sugar. Yeah. It's going to, if it has less than one gram of carbohydrate per serving, that's perfectly fine. Most people don't see any problems with eating bacon. Now, we're not talking about maple syrup bacon, but Come just regular cured bacon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not, not, not honey, the honey glazed bacon that yeah. you get at some places. Mm, that's not what we're talking on. about. Come on. That's not cute. No. Nope. That's not cute. But most bacon is. And if you're really worried about that, we, we aren't. But Peterson's spelled with a D, P E D. Peterson's bacon has no sugar, no nitrates, no antibiotics. And it's delicious. Their, their pigs are super happy. It's really tasty. And uh, ethically sourced. And we love Peterson's bacon. If yeah. I can find it, I'd buy it because it's really good. Yeah. You guys need to get your bacon in Nashville. We can't find it. Here. They have it at Sprouts sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that now we buy local bacon because we have a place that we have found that has local bacon. And so now we get it from there. Oh, yeah. And it's theirs is also supposed to be no antibiotics and humanely, humanely raised yeah. pigs. Yeah. My child is screaming bloody okay. murder. He may not make an appearance tonight. I don't oh, know. my. Poppy oh, must no. have made him mad. I don't know. Sometimes he gets mad at his poppy. He's been to no, he's got a molar coming in, and at night, for some reason, it hurts him more, and he gets mad. Yeah, he was so up mad. at like 2 a.m. last night, yeah. squalling. No bueno. Uh, bacon jerky, yeah, Peterson's has bacon yeah, jerky. Yeah, this is too. so good. Um, let's see. Is coffee an appetite suppressant? Maybe for some people. And so when you look at the big epidemiological studies, people who drink more coffee tend to be slimmer, tend to lose a little more weight than people who don't drink coffee. I do not think there's anything magical in coffee that does this. I think it's the caffeine. It speeds up your metabolism a little bit, maybe curbs your appetite a little bit. Uh, also gives you something to do with your hands so you're not reaching for food. Right. But yeah, coffee is, yeah, I think coffee is 100% keto, 100% carnivore. Uh, and for some people, it can seem to be an appetite suppressant. Yeah. But we don't think people should just like down coffee. No. I think water is very important too. <sighs> hi, baby. Oh, he's happy now. You guys <laughs> want to say hi to Beckett? Come here, baby. <gasps> Hello. Hi. Come what here. What happened to you? Why were you screaming? You I think it's mommy. <laughs> Oh, is it mommy time? <laughs> there he is. He may just want mommy for her special abilities. So I think that, yeah, that's definitely what he wants. Look at him. <laughs> what is you, baby? Look at the Look baby. At baby. <gasps> Hi, baby. No. Who's that? That dada. Who's that? <laughs> he knows we're distracting him. He's, oh. he's allowing it for a minute. I love you. You're so cute. <laughs> this little biscuit is 11 months old today. Wow. He's almost grown. 11 months. Next week he'll be in college. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Baby Becky. I'm going to get your mouse. I'm going to get your mouse. Um, if you're new here, this is our little boy. He is breastfed, but he also is keto. We feed him mostly meat, but he does eat a little veg sometimes. But he is a total keto baby. And I had a keto pregnancy as well. So Mickey's playing peekaboo behind the laptop. <gasps> peekaboo. Mickey. Oh, now well, he's playing peekaboo. He plays peekaboo. He, he hides. Peekaboo. Hide. Peekaboo. 
so, yeah, it is completely safe to feed your child a keto, low carb, whole foods based diet. Yeah. He has not had rice or cereal or any of that yucky stuff, have you? Nope. Nope. We love meat. He, and loves, he never will. He loves lamb chops. He loves ribs. He loves brisket. He loves chicken. He pretty much loves food. He loves Gouda cheese. Yes, he loves. He Gouda loves hot dogs. Cheese. He loves bologna and liverwurst. Yeah, he's a redneck baby. He's a redneck. He loves yeah, and spam. Poppy makes him. Ow! Poppy makes him spam and eggs, and he loves that. He thought that was funny. Oh, okay, mom is coming. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our patrons and our Facebook supporters. You guys are part of our keto family, and we love you. And we thank you so much for your support. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Becky. Bye -bye. Tell them bye-bye. Okay. No? Not tonight. You Not tonight. tonight. Maybe no. next week. So we do this every Monday night at 7 p.m. Tomorrow night at 6 p.m. on every Tuesday, we're live in our private Facebook group with Facebook supporters and patrons. And so if you want to be, if you didn't get enough of us tonight, then become a Facebook subscriber or become a patron on patreon.com and you get a password and you can get into the private Facebook group so you can get an extra hour of us plus all the, the, the camaraderie of all the keto and carnivore people in our private group. I think there's 4,500 people in there. And so in that private group, you can find your tribe. You can find your long lost brother or sister, your keto brother or your carnivore sister who can do this with you and go down this journey, go down this road with you. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it more fun. So we're going to sign off for this evening. This is Dr. Barry. Thank you very much. See you next time.